guys welcome to part four of a woman's guide to cannabis by nikki fewer again this is for educational purposes only this is not my i did not write this um but yeah this is for us to learn so part four inhaling cannabis fast and efficient the next big question about cannabis do i want to smoke it even if you know in your bones you don't want to smoke don't skip this section a lot of patients come to the dispensary convinced they don't want to inhale, so they try edibles, creams, and tinctures, and they find some relief from their symptoms and pain, but eventually they all reconsider and start asking about smoking and vaping. In this chapter, you'll find out why. So, alright, so the first chapter in this section, smoking cannabis is healthier than eating a cheeseburger. The idea of inhaling medicinal smoke may sound strange, but it could be a really pleasant experience if you want it to be. Cultures and civilizations have created entire ceremonies to celebrate the smoking of medicinal herbs. Cigarette smoke and cannabis smoke contain many of the same dangerous and carcinogenic compounds, yet studies have shown that chronic marijuana smoking, a joint a day for over 20 years, does not cause lung damage or impart a higher risk of cancer. And that is from a study um, listed below. A pack of cigarettes a day can kill us. We all know that. But a joint a day can actually improve lung tissue and make us healthier. The theory is that the medicinal cannabinoids and terp terpenes that are inhaled in the cannabis smoke are so powerfully anti-inflammatory that they counter interact so that they counteract that they counteract the mild inflammatory damage of smoke and tar. Smoking cannabis is not totally harmless, however. Be aware that smoking does increase the risk of bronchitis and increases the amount of mucus in the throat, which can cause a wet smoker's cough, which is not chronic. It ceases when smoking ceases. Smoke is, is an irritant, which is why our bodies make mucus. Cannabis smoke is considered a mild irritant. In dispensaries, 40 to 60% of all sales are for raw cannabis flour. Some patients use the flour to make edibles, but most are smoking it. Smoking is the least expensive way to use cannabis on a regular basis, which makes it a popular option because cannabis medicine is not inexpensive. But the best reason to smoke cannabis is the effects of smoking are felt immediately, and one or two inhalations are enough to feel happy and relaxed within seconds. If you eat cannabis in a brownie, it can take up to an hour before pain relief comes, but inhaling cannabis provides immediate pain relief. When smoking cannabis, the high lasts for an hour or two, and we can control exactly how high we get. Inhalation by inhalation. Alright, so the quality of cannabis flower. At the upscale florist in the nice neighborhood, I spend $100 for a dozen roses. At the gas station down the street, a dozen roses is available for $19.99. When I place the bouquet side by side, the reason for spending extra money becomes clear. The expensive roses are much more beautiful and last a lot longer than the gas station roses. The same is true of cannabis flowers. High quality cannabis looks, smells, and smokes much better than low quality flower. High quality cannabis is more potent, so the medicine is more effective and worth the extra cost. The best cannabis flower is organic and free of pesticides and mold, with the lab results to prove it. It's easy to see the difference while shopping in the dispensary and if you, and it, if you know what to look for. High quality flowers smell good and the odor is strong because the flower is coated with trichomes. This coating appears like a sparkly layer on the flower and it holds terpenes, the medicinal compounds that give cannabis its smell. Citrus, sweet, hops, skunk, Whatever the dominant odor of that particular strain, it just smells strongly of it. Poorly dried and cured cannabis flower smells like hay or grass. Curing is when the smell really comes together. So if that step of the process is skipped, well, the cannabis won't smell good. The best flowers are hand trimmed, not machine trimmed. When cannabis flowers, sorry, when cannabis plants are harvested, the flower needs to be trimmed. The flower buds have small sugar leaves that need to be removed before we consume them. Growers can either hire human beings to trim the plants or they can get a machine to do the work. 
Of course, people cost more, but the final result is much, much better. Trim machines chop up flowers and remove the coating of trichomes. Sometimes the biggest difference between high quality flower and bad flower is the trim job. Evidence of the quality of cannabis flower can also be seen in the ash. After you smoke it, it burns down and turns to ash. If the ash is bright white, it means the cannabis plant was properly flushed and the flower does not contain any pesticides, fertilizers, or plant food. Flushing occurs during the last two weeks of growth when the plant is watered with plain water and no plant food, fertilizers, or pesticides are used. This washes away the salts and additives that build up in the soil and roots of the plant. If the ash of a joint or pipe is gray, the plant was flushed a little bit, and if the ash is dark and black, the cannabis was not flushed at all. This won't cause you any immediate harm, but it would, would be wise not to buy from that supplier again. After the cannabis flowers are cut from the plants, dried, and trimmed, they need to spend some quality time in an airtight glass jar to cure. Curing is the process of slowly removing the last of the moisture from the flower. Tobacco is cured for maximum flavor, too. The best flowers are bright and colorful with hints of pink, purple, blue, and orange hairs tucked among the bright green flower bloods. Bad flower is a dull greenish brown with no color, colorful hairs. Properly dried and cured marijuana flowers are big and dense and sticky without being too wet or too dry. Low quality buds are not dense and are either too wet to smoke or so dry they crumble into dust. If you want to see what prize-worthy flowers look like, Instagram has lots of photos of beautiful, artisanal, organic cannabis flowers. Mid-quality flowers are not bad medicine, they just aren't Instagram-worthy. Any variety of cannabis can be well-cultivated, well-harvested, and pesticide-free. Blue Dream can be the best flower in the dispensary, or it could be the worst, depending on how well that particular plant was grown. The butt tender knows which strains look great and which don't, so ask them for their opinion. Smell the jars or examine the flowers through the packaging if you can. The amount of THC and CBD in the cannabis does affect how the flower looks. THC makes plants and flowers look prettier, more color, more sparkle. CBD makes cannabis flower look a little more rustic than the blue ribbon perfection of THC plants and flowers. CBD-rich strains smell as lovely as THC-rich strains, and the same steps are required to create high-quality flour, flushed, dried, trimmed, and cured properly, but CBD strains will always struggle to win any beauty contest. Most dispensaries price flour according to quality, with the worst being deeply discounted and the best priced as high as the market will bear. I cannot tell the difference between boxed wine and a $200 bottle. To me, all beer tastes the same, but I would walk across fire to get my hands on Kona coffee beans. I could tell the difference between the true Jamaican Blue Mountain coffee and the knockoff blends. I am as discerning about marijuana as I am about coffee. I am as sensitive to the differences in marijuana strains as I am to the difference between light roast and dark roast. For me, paying a few dollars more for the best flour in the dispensary is worth it. But... If every cannabis strain tastes the same and you can't tell which strain is the boxed wine and which is the $200 bottle, don't think of yourself as a failed weed snob. Think of yourself as an, eco as an economical cannabis user because you can buy the, 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 uh, the medium priced marijuana and get the same effects as long as you shop at a dispensary with a very good reputation for quality goods. You can buy the least expensive stuff, just don't go to a low quality dispensary and buy the cheapest stuff. So... How to judge a cannabis flower. So you want to judge it by smell. So, so smell. High quality is going to be strong and good. Mid quality is going to be a weak smell. And a low discount quality will be grass, hay, or chemical. You want to also judge it by the trichome. So if it's a good quality, you're going to have a disco ball sparkle. If it's mid quality, it's going to have a glitter sparkle. If it's low discount quality, it's going to have no sparkle at all. You also want to look for the trim. You want to see if it's high quality, it's hand trim. If it's mid quality, it's machine trimmed. And also if it's low discount quality, it's also machine trimmed. You also want to judge it by its flush. So high quality is white ash. Mid quality is light gray ash. And low discount quality is dark or black ash. You also want to um, judge it by how they cure it. So if it's high quality, it's been cured for more than 30 days. If it's mid quality, it's been less than 30 days. If it's low discount quality, no, it hasn't been cured at all. You also want to judge by its moisture. 
So if it's high quality, it's going to be balanced and sticky. If it's mid quality, it's going to be too wet or too dry. And also if it's low discount quality, it's also going to be too wet or too dry. You also want to judge it by its color. So if it's high quality, it's going to be bright green. If it's mid quality, it's going to be dull green. If it's low discount quality, it's going to be brown. You also want to judge it by Instagram. So go to Instagram and look it up. So if it's high quality, it's it'll be Instagram worthy. If it's mid quality, it'll probably maybe be Facebook worthy, not Instagram worthy. If it's low discount quality, it's probably going to be hidden from all social media. And also, you want to judge it by its price. So if it's a uh, so judge it by, so like, let's talk about brand names. Saks, S-A-K-S, that's high quality, okay? Anthropology is mid quality. Low discount quality is Target, okay? So that's what we're talking about by the different uh, qualities, okay? Smoking tools. Dispensaries stock all the marijuana supplies you could ever need, including vaporizers, rolling papers, cleaning solutions, storage containers, and glass pipes in a variety of sizes, shapes, and colors. We can also order smoking and vaping tools online because it is legal to ship them across state lines. There are dozens and dozens of options, each with its own style, so it's easy to find one that fits your look and lifestyle. So, one thing you need is a lighter. Get a disposable full-size lighter. Don't use a reusable lighter. Um, it will affect the taste neg negatively. Matches are fine, but it also may affect the flavor. So you want it to be disposable. Get a grinder. Get a small manual coffee grinder type device that breaks up marijuana buds into a coarsely ground shake that is rolled into papers for joints or packed into bowls to smoke. You can break up buds with your fingers, but they will leave a sticky residue in your hands that is difficult to wash off. You might want to get an airtight glass jar. Your marijuana flower is best stored in an airtight glass jar. This jar will continue curing the flowers for several months until you are ready to smoke them, which results in a better smoke and flight flavor. The buds will dry out if you leave them in the plastic packaging or in a container that is not airtight. Keep each strain in its own jar. Do not smoke seeds, stems, or leaves. Properly stored flowers will continue to cure and stay fresh for months or even years. Another thing you might want to get is a pipe. The most popular way to smoke marijuana is with a pipe, and glass is the best pipe material. The more expensive glass pieces are hand-blown by local artists, and the less expensive glass pieces are imported from Chinese factories. Save your pennies and buy hand-blown glass. It will last much longer and look more beautiful than the imported glass. Each pipe has a different sized bowl where we lightly pack the coarsely ground flour. Choose a larger bowl for sharing with friends and a smaller bowl like a chillum or a one hitter for medicating by yourself. Be sure to choose a pipe that has at least six inches between your face and the bowl. Once I bought the cutest little glass uh, pipe shaped like an elephant. The bowl was on the elephant's back and you inhaled from the trunk, but the pipe was so tiny that every time I touched a flame to the bowl, I practically set my eyebrows on fire. You also might want to get rolling papers. You could buy pre-roll joints at the dispensary or you could roll your own. Empty cones are rolling papers already rolled around a paper filter. Simply stuff the cone with shaved and smoke. All rolling papers are basically the same, so choose the size you prefer. Flavored papers are also an option. They are, they are akin to flavored coffee. You also might want to get a bong. Bongs are simply water pipes. And they come in a variety of sizes. Save the larger ones for social gatherings and get a small one for personal use. Water pipes tend to offer smoother, bigger inhalations than regular pipes. You also might want to get an ashtray. Smoking creates ash and you need a place to put it. Obviously, anything can work for this from a pretty seashell, properly dry, to an old plate. You also might want to get a freshening up kit. Smoking smells. There's no way around it. If you medicate by smoking flour, you need a freshening up kit to stay clean and smell and smell free. Eye drops for red eyes, hand wipes to clean the smell from your fingers, gum or mints to freshen your breath, lip balm, and a touch of perfume will keep you from smelling like a hippie. Stash a bottle of water in your go in your uh go bag too. Dry uh, dry mouth is a prevalent side effect of smoking cannabis. You also might want to 
worry about or think about the airflow in your home so if you smoke marijuana in your home the smell will linger but not like cigarette smoke marijuana smoke will fill the room with this distinctive smell but an open window and a fan clears up the problem in no time prop the fan in the window outwards and the fan sucks the smoke from the room right the next chapter is how to smoke a joint If you choose to smoke a joint for your first high, a pre-roll joint is a good option. Dispensaries sell pre-rolls that are made of a filter and a very thin paper and contain up to a gram of marijuana. The filter tip works just like a cigarette. Number one, with a lighter, apply the flame to the twisted end, not the filter, and gently inhale. Don't hold the flame to the paper for too long. Just touch the flame to the paper and let your inhale pull the flame into the flower. Number two, once you inhale a lung full of smoke, release it immediately. The cannabinoids and terpenes have already entered your body through the lung tissue, and holding in the smoke for, long, for longer won't get you any higher. After one or two inhalations, gently stub out the burning end of the joint in an ashtray and save it for later. You can relight the joint over and over again until it's gone. You do not need to, nor should you, smoke the whole thing at once. Number three, Notice how you feel. Take a deep breath. Relax your shoulders and focus on your body. One of the best reasons to smoke cannabis is fast-acting pain relief. So become aware of your pain levels and how they change in the next few minutes. If you chose a sativa, you might perk up a bit, like when your morning coffee kicks in. If you chose an indica, you may feel like lying down is the best idea you've ever had. If you chose a high CBD strain, your pain should decrease quick quickly. Number four. If you feel good and about 20 minutes have passed and you want to try another inhalation, go for it. For some symptoms and conditions, one or two inhalations is enough uh, medicine. Others need a lot more before the relief comes. If you need more, smoke more. You'll figure out how much to smoke and how often. But right now, we're just getting familiar with the process of medicating. Wait 10 minutes between inhalations to avoid getting too high. You might not feel anything, and that's okay. Not everybody gets high the first time, and nobody knows exactly why. Our bodies produce cannabinoids, and some may naturally have higher or lower levels of natural cannabinoids and receptors that affect the body's ability to absorb, to, to absorb cannabinoids from the plant. Some people try marijuana and they feel high and love it immediately, and other people try marijuana and either nothing happens or they don't enjoy it at all. Don't give up if the first time doesn't go well. Try again with a smaller dose. All right, the next chapter is vaping for discretion. The worst thing about smoking marijuana is the smoke. It's, it uh, smells, and most people recognize the smell, which can make smokers self-conscious. When you smoke, you also create ash, which can be messy. Vaporizers, on the other hand, are clean, discreet, and elegant. Vaping gives us all the benefits of smoking with none of the smoke. Vaping is the same process as smoking, inhaling cannabinoids or terpenes into the lungs, but without the combustion of fire. Vaporizers and vape pets are discreet and can be used indoors. They look like they look like they produce smoke, but that cloud is just vapor, and it does not smell like marijuana. Dispensaries sell vaporizers. They are available at every price point, and for the most part, you you, you get what you pay for. Some vaporizers have extremely sophisticated and practical designs, and some are cheaply made and will break after a couple, after a few uses. Some are better for larger doses, but some are better for on the go. I'll go into detail on the varieties, but there are two main types. So the first one is a portable or handheld vaporizer. They're easy to carry in a purse or bag. They run on batteries and need to be charged like a cell phone. Like a glass pipe, they have a small bowl for flour, which heats up the tap. Uh, which heats up at the touch of a button. The heated bowl releases cannabinoids and terpenes into a vapor that is inhaled like smoke, but doesn't smell like smoke. And another one is a tabletop vaporizer. They are large instruments that are meant to be used at home. With some machines, vapor fills a bag of, vapor fills a bag of air that is inhaled. Other machines release vapor when the user inhales from a plastic tube. These are great machines for sharing with friends. Uh, the next chapter is what to vape cannabis concentrates. 
There are two different forms of cannabis to choose from to put in your vape, flower or concentrate. Cannabis flower can be smoked or vaped as is, but concentrates, a fairly new evolution of cannabis, are specifically designed to be vaporized. Concentrates are made by separating the medicinal compounds of marijuana from the plant matter. When marijuana flowers are turned into concentrates, several grams of cannabis flower are converted into one gram of cannabis concentrate creating a powerful medical substance that takes the form of a sticky glue called wax, a fragile solid called shatter or oil. Five years ago, when I was 40, my age was the great divide between consumers of flowers or 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 flower or concentrates. Younger than 40 patients vaped concentrates, while anyone older than 40 smoked flower. At the time, vape pens hadn't taken off in popularity yet, so the tiny darts of goo and the blow torches required to heat them didn't appeal to older or more sophisticated crowds. Now, with more advanced and reliable vaporizers that made it easy to use concentrates, they're appealing to every age of consumer. The last few years have seen handheld vaporizers and disposable vape pens explode in popularity as an easy, elegant way to vape. The simplest vape pens are nothing more than a battery and a cartridge. You screw the cartridge onto the battery and inhale gently on the mouthpiece. When the cartridge is empty, it is thrown away and a new one is screwed on. The Spencer's are stocked with cartridges in different strains and flavors. I use vape pens in the car with my mother when she's driving, as she never knows. Vape pens are ideal for people who need to medicate discreetly. Cannabis flower is 20% of medicinal compounds like cannabinoids and terpenes and 80% plant matter that is not medicine. When we smoke marijuana, we inhale the plant matter, which doesn't help us, but it doesn't harm either. Concentrates, on the other hand, are anywhere from 50 to 90% medicinal compounds. A tiny dose, a literal dab of goo, contains enough medicine to relieve pain for hours. Vaping concentrates have the same effect as smoking or vaping flour. We feel high almost immediately and it lasts for an hour or two. Concentrates require trial and error. Marijuana flower smokers have learned the hard way that concentrates are much stronger than anything they've tried before. If you decide to try a concentrate, take one inhalation. Just one. Wait a full hour before taking another. Notice how you feel and how it affects you. If you ignore my advice and decide to take two hits, find a glass of water and a place to lay down. BHO, butane hash oil. Cannabis users use butane, the same fluid that's in a lighter, to extract... So cannabis producers use butane to extract the medicinal compounds from the plant matter. Then they remove the butane from the oil. Most of the products and dispensaries are made with butane hash oil. The textures of, of a butane concentrate determines its name. Wax, shatter, crumble, all defined on page 126. CO2 oil. CO2 CO2 oil is magic. It has all the medicinal compounds of cannabis with none of the plant matter. The oil is packaged in an oral syringe, so to use it, we simply squeeze out a drop or two at a time. We have to be careful with this oil because we can easily get too high with just an extra drop. CO2 oil can be vaped or eaten. Vape pen cartridges. Cartridges are pre-filled with potent marijuana oil, CO2 oil, um, dispensary stock cartridges in a variety of potencies and strains, and they are simply screwed onto a small rechargeable battery. Take an inhalation anytime you need a shot of pain relief. Vape pads hold hundreds of inhalations, can last for weeks, and are easy to carry around in a bag. Wax. Wax is a, is a soft, solid chunk of uh, concentrate, similar to hash. A dab tool or skewer can be used to pull off a small dab of wax that is then loaded into a vaporizer. Shatter. The only difference between wax and shatter is texture. Shatter is more solid and will break into pieces. Literally shatter. Crumble. Simply a drier version of wax. Crumble can be picked up with your fingers without sticking to your skin. Sugar, sap, butter, and honeycomb are other um, names of concentrates that are defined by their texture. Live resin. Most concentrates are made with dry flowers, but live resin is made with frozen flowers, which shaves more of the terpenes and gives live resin a better flavor and smell than other concentrates. Paint, paint thinner, or RSO. 
RSO stands for Rick Simpson Oil. The internet is full of recipes for making mirror and water oil at home using paint thinner as a solvent. Paint thinner is not safe for consumption, and this oil should not be eaten, vaped, or smoked. That's incorrect, though, because RSO you can eat, and it gets you high. Like, that, that's incorrect. It's not paint thinner. I don't know what... That's weird. Anyway, cave slash dry sift. The oldest method for concent concentrating marijuana is to gently rub marijuana flowers over screens to separate the trichomes from the rest of the plant matter. Trichomes, the sparkly stuff that covers the flower, flowers, contain most of the cannabinoids and terpenes in the marijuana plant. When we use a grinder to break up marijuana flower, keef collects in the bottom of the grinder. Rosin. Rosin is the newest way to extract out of solvent and is the easiest concentrate to make at home. Marijuana flour is simply pressed with heat, which releases medicated oil. A hair strainer and parchment paper are the only tools needed to literally press oil out of the flour. The oil is scraped off the paper and vaped in a vaporizer. Bubble hash. Also known as water hash, ice hash, or solventless hash. Water is used to separate the medicinal compounds from the plant matter by agitating marijuana in ice water. Bubble hash can be smoked, vaped, or cooked into edibles. Different types of vaporizers and how to use them. There are dozens of vaporizers in different styles and sizes. Some can be used to vape flowers, some are used for concentrates, and some can be used for both. You don't ever need a lighter or an ashtray, and there is no smell when you vape. All right, so let's start with vape pets. Disposable vape pen cartridges are easy to use, don't smell, and require zero cleanup. Pens made, up of pens made up of a battery and a cartridge require charging via a basic USB charger. Then you simply put the mouthpiece in your mouth and inhale. Some pens need to be turned on before inhaling by pressing a button a few times. When the cartridge runs out of oil, simply unscrew it, dispose of it, and buy a new cartridge. Cartridges are available in THC, CBD, 1 to 1, which is THC and CBD, indica, sativa, and hybrid. If you inhale on your pen and it doesn't work, it may be clogged. Blast the cartridge, blast the cartridge with some hot air from a hair dryer. The oil might just be too cold and solid, and a little heat warms it up and gets it moving again. Pens can leak too, so keep yours in a container when you carry it around. Or you can just like, if it's clogged, you could just suck on it. You know that that works too. Handheld vaporizers. If vape pens are beginner. Vapes, then handheld slash portable vaporizers are intermediate level um, vaporizers. They can be used as flour or concentrate, and while they're bigger than a pen, they still fit in a clutch. So, you can take your vaporizer anywhere you go. Vapor does not smell like smoke does, so they are perfect for discretion. Handheld vaporizers are bigger and more powerful with stronger batteries so they can go longer without being charged, reloaded, or cleaned. I love my Firefly vaporizer. It feels solid and expensive and obsessively designed. Like any portable vaporizer, there is a small bowl to hold the concentrate or flour and heat it until it vaporizes. I use a dab tool similar to the tool uh, manicurists used on my cuticles. Uses use on my cuticles to scoop a tiny amount, a dab of concentrate, and I smear it into the bowl of the vaporizer. I snap on the lid, hit the button. Watch the coils heat up and inhale the vapor. I release the button, exhale, and I'm finished. When I vape concentrated marijuana, one inhalation is more than enough for me to feel high and relaxed. But the vaporizer also vapes cannabis flowers, so I could buy anything at the dispensary and vape it in my Firefly because concentrates are more concentrated. Vaping flour isn't as potent as vaping shatter or wax, so I take two or three inhalations of vape flour. The Firefly is one of the most expensive vaporizers at $300 or more. I saved my pennies for months to buy it, but it certainly isn't the only portable vaporizer on the market. The Pax Vaporizer is another high-end, well-designed device, and other portable vaporizers are available at different price points. Dispensary sell vaporizers, so ask your butt tender to help you pick out the right one for you. They are also available online, of course. Ugh, excuse me. Um, tabletop vaporizers. These are advanced level vaporizers that are best suited for groups of people or anyone who needs high doses for significant pain. 
There are two versions. One is a hookah style, where vapor is inhaled through a tube. The other version fills a clear plastic bag with vapor like a balloon. Tabletop vaporizers can be used with canvas, flour, or concentrate, but they aren't portable and are for home use primarily. Right, the next chapter is marijuana is a lot stronger than it was before. Every time I'm with a middle-aged friend trying marijuana again after years of responsible child rearing, they get way too high. Every time I warn them, I try to stop them, and they do it anyway. When friends came to visit me in the mountains, they toured the dispensary and garden, marveled at marijuana-infused tea bags and lemon bars, and immediately took too much. Slow down. It's a lot stronger than it was in the 90s, and you're 40 now. Oh, I'll be fine. They take three inhalations in a row without waiting to see how one or two will affect them, and suddenly they're way too stoned. I can tell when they've had too much because they stop talking. They no longer make eye contact or seem to acknowledge that anyone is there at all. But their own hands have become so fascinating, they can't stop staring at them. When this happens, I know I've got about an hour before they come around and can have a normal conversation again. Before they can come around and have a normal conversation again. So, I take away the marijuana, get them a big bottle of water, and look for the best tacos or donuts, usually both, I could find. The cannabis flowers and legal dispensaries is more potent than the marijuana we smoked in college, no matter how old we are. It's also a lot more expensive. There is a lot more THC in a single joint now, so to get comfortably high, we need to smoke a lot less of it than we used to. In the 60s and 70s, baby boomers smoked marijuana that grew wild outdoors without genetic manipulation. THC was around 5 to 10 percent, much lower than the 20 to 30 percent potency we see in the dispensary today. In the 80s and 90s, when illegal marijuana cultivation moved indoors to avoid detection, growers were able to exert more control over the growing process. Better lighting, nutrients, and growing conditions boost the potency of the flowers on the, on the plant. A healthy, well-grown plant produces much more marijuana, about much higher quality than a poorly grown plant. Potency increased from 5 to 10% THC to 10 to 20% THC during the end of the 20th century because of indoor cultivation and better plant genetics. But it was the legal marijuana market of the 21st century that really boosted the THC potency levels to new heights. The legal market is competitive and cannabis cultivators are constantly striving to increase the THC potency of their plants because that's what the market demands. A lot of patients think that buying higher potency THC is a bargain, so they look for the highest THC potency they can find. Now, we all know, because we've been reading this book, that the amount of THC in a cannabis flower isn't nearly as important as the balance of all the cannabinoids and terpenes in a cannabis, in, in cannabis. but most other users don't know this yet. To meet that demand for higher THC, careful breeding and lab testing by cultivators, now legal, has boosted THC potency levels up to 30% in a few select strains. This isn't a bad thing, but it just means we need to consume less flour when we get high. 10% THC means I need two or three inhalations to feel high. 30% means I just need one inhalation to get high. Don't be afraid of high potency. Just make sure to consume less to avoid anxiety. So here's a couple things to remember. Don't buy marijuana based on just THC. A 15% THC strain can feel better than a 25% THC strain. The only real difference between different concentrates is personal preference. I find it easier to load shatter into my vaporizer while someone else prefers vaping wax. Choose the one you, you like and try them all until you decide which one you like best. And also, vape pens are great to have around for emergencies like back pain and insomnia. So yeah, that was part four. I hope you guys enjoy. Stay tuned for part five.